Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new thriller and horror reading vlog. And in this vlog, I'm going to be reading four new release thriller and horror books that I am very excited about. I mean, it was originally going to be four thrillers, but then I realized some of these are a little bit more horror than I thought they were. And I'm very excited about today's vlog. However, before we do jump into the books, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. The holidays are just around the corner and HelloFresh makes this time of year that's usually so chaotic so much much nicer with their chef crafted recipes and their pre-proportioned ingredients delivered right to your door so you can spend less time meal planning and more time just getting to enjoy the holidays. It's nice because you can save money on dinner so that you can splurge on all of the holiday shopping because HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and it's 25% less expensive than takeout. They have over 35 weekly recipes so there really is something for everyone and it makes it really easy because you can always swap out a protein for a different protein. You can customize it in the way that suits you best. One of the best things about HelloFresh too is their flexibility because you can change your meal preferences, you can change how many meals you want a week just with a few clicks in the app. And very recently I made these Italian chicken and pepper sandos with potato wedges for me and my sister and I was not expecting this recipe to be as easy as it was because I'm not the kind of person who would just know how to like whip up a good chicken sandwich. This was so freaking good it kind of tasted like a Philly cheesesteak but with like a chicken spin on it and I actually really liked it with the chicken. I felt like the chicken brought so much flavor to the sandwich. These Italian chicken sandwiches were so freaking good. Approved by my sister, approved by me. So you can go to hellofresh.com and use my code GABBYREADS70 for 70% off your order and free shipping. 70% off. Can you believe? When you go to hellofresh.com you use my code GABBYREADS70 and get 70% off and free shipping. You can't make this up. That is such a good deal. <laughs> Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and now on to the reading vlog. The two thrillers that I'm going to be reading for this vlog include The Family Game by Katherine Stedman as well as Stay Awake by Megan Golden. These are two pretty fairly new release thrillers that I've been very excited to check out and then the two that are more like on the thriller horror side <laughs> that I'm going to be reading for this video include White Horse by Erica T. Worth and then also Jackal by Erin E. Adams and White Horse is a this one's an actually an ARC copy that I had this one just went on sale in November and this one is a thriller mystery but it does lean more on the horror side and then also Jackal by Aaron E. Adams this one is also kind of like thriller mystery horror it does have a little bit of horror involved in it too and this one is actually the book troop pick for the month of November so I am going to be having a live show at the end of this month to discuss this book so if you would like to read along with us that would be cool I'll have that live show link down below if you want to save it yeah this was a super fun and exciting reading vlog so let me send you to about a week ago when I started with the family game <laughs> Good afternoon. I have started in on the family game and I'm about 66 pages and now I just got to chapter 8 and so far I've been really enjoying this one. It's very surprising to me so far. I feel like, you know, this book started with a pretty interesting kind of prologue that just kind of, it was kind of a flash forward, I think, of something that we might expect to come in the future. Um, and it was only about a page long. And then the first chapter dives right in to this woman. We're following this woman who's an author. Something that I was not expecting from this book is that it takes place in New York and it's during like Christmas time. So I actually feel like this might be the perfect time to be reading this book in like early November because it's starting to feel like, you know, people are starting to celebrate Christmas and like putting up lights and stuff. And so it just feels like the right time to be reading something like this. But yeah, I was pretty surprised, honestly, by the first chapter and how much like New York Christmas vibes I was getting. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because she was talking about like the Rockefeller Center and like the biggest tree. Cause you know, at the Rockefeller Center in New York, they have the tree that's like one of the biggest Christmas trees like ever. And then she was talking about how like there was this cute scene where 
the guy that she's with, like her boyfriend at the time, he like proposes to her on the ice at the Rockefeller Center in that first chapter. And it was so freaking cute. And I just, oh my gosh, like the New York vibes are so strong in this one. And then she's kind of talking about how she's like struggling with writing her next book. Like she's a pretty big best-selling author and she's writing the next book that's supposed to come out and she's struggling with writing it. And then his family, you know, this guy that she's going to be marrying into, he's actually American and she's British. It's funny because she talks about how she She's not really used to some things in like Americans culture and how you know there's some difference in culture there with them but his family is like super rich and super powerful and I'm just getting to the part now 60 pages in where she's really just kind of starting to meet the family and her best friend kind of thinks that she's crazy for saying yes to like getting married to him when she hasn't even met the family yet so now that they're engaged we're getting to the point now where they're you know she's starting to meet the family I don't know and I guess they have this weird you know time-honored tradition, a weird lethal game of survival. It sounds like it's going to be very similar to Ready or Not, the movie Ready or Not, which I actually love the movie Ready or Not. So if it's anything like that, I think I'll really enjoy this, but I don't know. I'm kind of surprised. I guess I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I am right off the bat. I will say there are like a ton of characters being introduced with like the family being introduced. So I hope it doesn't get too overwhelming, like trying to keep track of all these characters. I just went down to the kitchen to get a snack because I love eating grapes and wheat thins as like a snack, especially when my throat's hurting. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm still a little bit sick. I don't know what happened. Like right after we moved into this apartment, I just got hit with like what must have been a nasty cold. I don't know. It's not COVID. I've been testing like every day and it's not COVID, but there's something so comforting when my throat and my GERD starts acting up. Uh, wheat thins and grapes tends to be one of my favorite snacks. It's about just after four o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is starting to go down and I am 61% of the way through. I'm just at about 200 pages in and this book is pretty wild. It's actually surprising me quite a bit. I don't know why. I think I went into this book with slightly like lower expectations because I've tried to read books from this author before. Like I've tried to get into some of her other thrillers and they just never really worked for me. So I just assumed maybe that would be like just the situation of like this author just isn't for me. But I feel like this story in particular is really working for me and it's so interesting. I would highly, highly recommend checking out this audiobook because the audiobook is so cool. There's like lots of sound effects because there's lots of, uh, you know, there's conversations that this character has with like phone calls and it sounds like people are actually talking on the phone, which is really cool. And then there's also this thing happening with these like tapes in this book and she has to like play these tapes that she found and the sound of like her playing the tapes, it sounds like so freaking cool. You can like hear cars passing by and there's all these kinds of sound effects. Like, I don't know, I just really love all the effort that was put into making this audiobook really cool. I love too that, you know, there's more than just one mystery happening with this, you know, because it's not just like what's up with this family and there's like some family members that they don't talk about and there's like all this mystery happening with the family, but then our protagonist also seems to have some kind of secret, you know, she's always talking about how she's like, if they had known my secret, it would put me in prison for the rest of my life and all this shit. And I'm like, okay, what did she do? Like, there's also a mystery happening with her that I'm really invested in. I was also wondering too, you know, for like a good part of this book, I was like, you know, I was expecting there to be more like of a physical game or something actually happening because for the most part, I was starting to think, I was like, oh, okay. It seems like most of the family is just playing mind games with her. And that's really the kind of like family game that she's getting herself into. But then we do actually get a really cool, really creepy game scene that had to deal with this thing that I was not expecting. I just, I don't know. I wasn't expecting this book to have something like that. And so I was really excited by those scenes. I thought that they were so creepy. Like there were so many moments I was tabbing because I was like, what the fuck is happening? I thought it would even go in a direction that I really wasn't expecting, but it didn't quite go there because I'm like, okay, this is not a horror novel. This is a thriller. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really enjoying it so far. I actually really do like the protagonist. I'm really curious to see like where this could be going. Right now, we probably are going to start some dinner and then tonight, the Love is Blind season three finale episodes like just went up. So we're probably gonna be watching those. But then later tonight, I can totally see myself trying to finish this before bed because I am so invested. Sorry if you hear Tank, he's, you know, 
snoring right behind the camera as usual. <laughs> at night now and you know we made this really nice dinner we had these roast beef sliders and then after that we watched the final two episodes of love is blind season three and like i'm not gonna say anything you know spoilery but wow <laughs> what a reunion episode like that was kind of crazy that was kind of a lot but yeah that was one heck of a crazy finale crazy season but anyways i am jumping back into the family game i've been listening to it a little bit as i've just been getting ready for bed and i only have about 100 pages left and i while I was like in the bathroom like brushing my teeth I just listened to this part that was kind of like a twist and I was like wait what the heck and I was like going back in the audiobook to re-listen to it and I'm like okay shit like things are happening at this point in time so I'm invested I'm really curious to see where it goes and I'm definitely gonna finish it um, I'm gonna be laying in bed right now and painting my nails because I'm gonna be filming a video tomorrow that I want to have my nails like nice and painted for so I'm gonna be painting my nails finishing up this audiobook I know the next morning and I wanted to update you because last night I did finish the family game and oh my goodness what a wild book this was there were some things about the ending I mean there was one twist coming that I kind of did see coming and I feel like to be honest it just wasn't that surprising and I feel like if you're somebody that reads thrillers a lot sorry I don't know what my hair is doing right now but I feel like if you're somebody who reads thrillers often then you're probably not going to be surprised by like something that happens towards the end of this book but then there were other aspects of the ending that I was totally shocked by and I was like okay didn't see that coming so that was exciting you know like I love when a thriller can still surprise me even though some aspects of the ending can be a little bit predictable but otherwise I mean I still had so much fun with this book and I I feel like that's why I still have to give this one four stars even though I thought the ending was just a little like okay for me. The freaking atmosphere in this book was so freaking good. I wasn't expecting it to be like so festive and all of it takes place right around the holidays and Christmas time so I really do feel like this would be the perfect book to read at this time of year like November, December time and I just had a lot of fun with the different aspects in this book. Like I know a lot of people when I was reading some negative reviews last night a lot of people were saying that this protagonist was really frustrating and I can definitely see that but I was just kind of like going with the flow of the story. I wasn't really thinking too hard about it. I really loved the fun aspect in this book with the tape because there's this like tape that this character's listening to that somebody gave her throughout the book and it's just really interesting especially with the audiobook. Like I highly highly recommend the audiobook because it was so freaking cool. Like the listening experience was definitely improved with that audiobook because I just thought it paired so well with like the sound effects and everything and apparently the audiobook was actually read by the author herself which is really cool. I didn't realize and she's actually really good at having a British accent. I do think this author is British but then she also does an American accent when she's doing like the husband's voice. So like I don't know I was really impressed by her work in this audiobook. Like I thought it was really fantastic. I actually thought it was Imogen Church which is like my favorite audiobook narrator who narrates all the Ruth Ware audiobooks. I like double checked the audiobooks. I was like wait who's narrating this and I saw that it was actually the author which wow that's really cool. But yeah this was a really fun time. It had really great atmosphere. I guess I do if I had one kind of you know critique about it I guess I do wish there was just a little bit more of like the games element involved because for the most part there was only two really interesting kind of scenes where a game was kind of happening but that definitely wasn't like a main part of the story so I guess if that's something that you're expecting going into this maybe don't but otherwise this was a really great thriller I had a lot of fun with it four stars from me so I don't know which one I'm gonna start next today I have a video that I have to film today and get done and then after the video is all filmed I'm probably gonna jump into the next thing. It 
it has been an incredibly long day. It's about eight o'clock at night right now. I made this really nice dinner tonight. I made this like chicken with mushrooms and mashed potatoes. It was so freaking good. Like honestly, one of the best meals that I've had in days because I've been sick, you know, and I've had like too low of energy to make anything good. But today I've actually started feeling a lot better. I was able to film a video today. I filmed the video that was like a book for every song on Midnight's by Taylor Swift. And I literally was filming for like two and a half hours. So it almost kind of like made my throat start hurting again because I was talking for so long. But anyways, I decided to jump into Stay Awake by Megan Golden next and this is one that I've been really excited about because I have read The Night Swim from this author and I was a big fan of The Night Swim so I was pretty hyped about this one. I was also really excited um, after seeing this one get compared to Memento which is one of my favorite Christopher Nolan movies so I was like okay expectations are pretty high and this one is really interesting so far. I'm about uh, 96 pages in. I've just been listening to this on audio for a little bit now. So the story is really interesting. We're following this woman named Liv who, you know, she wakes up in the back of a taxi and she can't remember how she got there. And then she goes to the place that she thinks is her apartment and she discovers that other people are like living there and they're like, we don't know who you are. And then she goes to get her phone and her phone isn't anywhere on her, but she does find a bloody knife in her pocket. And she absolutely has no memory of any of this. She doesn't know what's going on. And then she finds a note on her hand that was scribbled on her hand that says stay awake and so I can definitely already see the comparisons you know to Memento because of all of the uh, notes that she's writing for herself on her own skin it's very much like Memento in that way so that's very exciting but I also do like that you know this story it's told not just from you know present day point of view when Liv is trying to figure out what's going on and she seems to be like losing her memories every time she sleeps and then we also get a flashback of like two years ago and so we follow her perspective two years ago Ago when she's you know working for this trendy magazine in New York City it's really interesting too because in you know the present day when she's trying to figure out what's going on she sees you know glimpses of like the local news and the local news there's this horrific crime where there's this guy was murdered and they don't know what could have caused it but on the window like next to the murder somebody wrote wake up in like in the victim's blood and it just looks kind of similar to like the writing that she has on her own arm and so she's like wondering if she is somehow connected and if her memory loss is somehow connected to this crime that happened and so it's fascinating because we get her point of view in the present day and then we get Liv's point of view two years ago to kind of see like what was happening the last time that she was able to remember things and then we also do get the point of view of a detective who's working on the scene of like the crime scene that happened that I was just Thing. And so it's really interesting. I like that it has, you know, very short, quick chapters. It's a very quick read so far and it immediately just like grips you with that first chapter. So, so far I'm having a total blast with this. I think it's really fun. I usually don't like love detective point of views in thrillers, but with this one, I don't mind it because I am really curious about the crime scene that they're working on. And I like that we have the balance of, you know, the detective point of view, but then we also get Liv's point of view and Liv's point of view in the past as well. And there's also some stuff happening in Liv's past from two years ago that's like really interesting. And I'm wondering if that's gonna be connected to like why she loses her memory in the first place. Like, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. So yeah. you know, cozy in this living area. Go get it, Dink, go! <laughs> oh my god. Good morning, the couch has arrived! Oh my god, look at this beauty! You know. It's freaking huge. Why a white couch, you ask? Yeah, why? Because. Why a white couch? Because look at it. <laughs> it is stunning, yeah, I do love. Like, and we put blankets so tank, tank can't get, tank can't get it all dirty, huh? 
It's not that dirty of a dog, though. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful white couch. It and now shed a little, but it is hurt. Rachel has started decorating for Christmas in here. Wow, Christmas trees up. Everything's yeah, up. Yeah, honey. We got the ROG. Rachel, Obed, Gabby. So as you could see from those clips this morning, our couch arrived early, which was actually really cool, you know, because we were expecting it to, to get delivered between like 10.30 and 12 today, and they showed up at 10. So that was kind of exciting actually, because we were able to get like a jump start on the day and get things done. Last night, I got 55% of the way through the audiobook. I think I'm around like 180 pages in now. And this book is still really interesting. I feel like things are getting revealed to us in a really interesting way because we're learning a lot about our main protagonist from a different point of view that's like not her but it's interesting to like learn these things about her when she doesn't even know these things about herself you know like i don't know it's just a very interesting um thing that's happening but yeah i'm still really enjoying this i'm curious to see where it's going i don't know if i'm gonna have time to be like reading this today today because well i'm gonna be listening to the audiobook right now i'm on the way to the library because i wanted to you know drop off some of my library books and then also pick up a few holds that just came in and so i'm gonna be listening to the audiobook while i'm on the way to the library but then i really have to edit that video that i filmed yesterday today and then later tonight i'm going out to dinner with my parents we wanted to like take them out as a thank you for like helping us move and so we're gonna be doing that a little bit later and then tonight at like later later tonight at like seven i'm gonna be doing reading sprints with my friend jesse over on their channel with like a bunch of other creators and so those are gonna be some like late night reading sprints so i'm definitely hoping to you know finish this book later tonight on sprints Hi, I'm home. It's like 8 o'clock at night and I'm currently on reading sprints right now with my friend Jesse and a few other creators. Uh, it's been a really long day. I went to the library and like I'm so stupid because the library was closed because it's Veterans Day. I just, I didn't even realize that the library would be closed. So yeah, I've literally been editing this video like all day. It took me like three hours to edit this uh, a book for every song on midnight's video and so then immediately after i finished editing the video we went out to dinner i saw my parents they came over for a little bit it was great and now i'm on reading sprints right now with jesse i'm still reading stay awake It is just after 11 o'clock at night, but I wanted to update you that I finished reading Stay Awake. And this book, I feel like I'm probably gonna end up giving this one four stars. Like there were some things that I really loved about this one, but then I just wasn't a huge fan, I guess, of the way that this book ended up going towards the end. I feel like this is one of those books where, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I feel like everything's kind of resolved and I'm just kind of ready for this to be over now, kind of. I don't know, I feel like this thriller, it was probably about like 50 pages too long for me. Like I was just like, okay, I'm starting to get kind of bored of this. And I also thought the ending, you know, it was just starting to get a little bit repetitive because, you know, we are following this protagonist who like every time she falls asleep and she wakes up, she loses a lot of her memories. And so it's a lot of like, you know, repetition with scenes of like her waking up and not knowing where she is and then seeing you know the handwritten let like the handwritten notes for herself that she wrote on her wrist that's like stay awake and so it was a lot of repetition I felt towards the end and then just in general I wasn't like the biggest fan of like the ending and the reveals like I just didn't find them to be that surprising but with that being said, um, I am still giving this four stars because this was a very quick read for me. Like the chapters were very short. It was really easy to get invested. I liked that we were going back and forth between, you know, our protagonist point of view and then also the detective point of view because I liked seeing both sides. And I liked how we learned a little bit more about our protagonist through the point of view of the detective. I thought that was a really interesting way to tell the story. I also feel like it's uh, very like interesting and also kind of sad when we follow a protagonist like this who cannot trust the police and can't depend on the police when things are getting like really dangerous and scary and like there's nothing worse than you know the police kind of like mocking you or making you feel like an idiot when you feel like something is happening to you you know and especially in this case when she feels like somebody's kind of like stalking her potentially and the police just like 
brush it off constantly. Like I can see how that would be so incredibly frustrating when you feel like there's something possibly dangerous happening to you and the police just don't even really give you the time of day and they just think that you're crazy. I can imagine that that's very frustrating and as you know a reader I was very frustrated on her behalf and you know I saw a lot of the um, lower reviews for this one on Goodreads saying that they didn't really like the audiobook narration but I actually really enjoyed the audiobook narration. This one's actually narrated by Imogen Church which is you know she's the one who narrates a lot of the Ruth Ware audiobooks and I really enjoy the way she narrates audiobooks, I don't know, she makes it very engaging. And I feel like this is a thriller that really like gripped me right from that first chapter. And so I, f I still feel like I would recommend this. You know, it's a really fun time. Tomorrow, I'm probably gonna start White Horse next. Tank is loving his couch that we got just for him. <laughs> oh, Tanky. This is served. I made some cute little potatoes. I made eggs, I made toast. I got some grapes. Hey, I wanted to um, take a moment to do a guitar cover for one of my favorite songs on Midnight's. This song is so much fun to play on guitar. Today's my first time um, trying to play it, so I've been practicing for like 20 minutes. My town was a wasteland Full of cages, full of fences Pageant queens and big pretenders But for some it was paradise Love potion jumping off things in the ocean. I broke his heart cause he was nice. Cause he was sunshine, I was in that rain. He wanted a comfortable, I wanted that pain. He wanted a bride, I was making my own name. Chasing that fame, and he stayed the same. All of me changed like midnight. All of me changed like midnight rain. Sometimes we all get just what we wanted, just what we wanted And he never thinks of me, except when I'm on TV And I guess sometimes we all get some kind of haunted, some kind of haunted And I never think of him, cause it's on nights like this That song is so beautiful and it hits <laughs> Just after three o'clock in the afternoon right now, but I wanted to update you because I've just been sitting on the couch, on our new couch, and reading White Horse pretty much all day. I'm at 170 pages in right now, so I'm just a little bit over halfway through it at the moment. And this book, it is pretty interesting, you know, we're following this woman named Carrie, and she spends a lot of time, you know, smoking. She spends a lot of time at this local bar called the White Horse, which also, side note, the bartender who works at this bar, his name is Nick, and so naturally I'm picturing Nick from New Girl as the bartender. That is a completely irrelevant side point, but just thought I had to mention it. But her cousin, Debbie, discovers this like family bracelet, and she quickly discovers that the bracelet is haunted by her mom or her mom like haunts the bracelet like anytime she has the bracelet on her mom comes around but there's also this um entity like this creature it's interesting too because her father is permanently disabled from this car crash that he was in because of her mother's death like she always blames her mom because i guess her mom like abandoned her when she was only like two days old and then the dad just kind of completely like lost it because of that and then he ended up getting in this really bad car accident and now he's paralyzed and he's not able to take care of himself i'm noticing too 
to as I'm reading this that this book is actually a little bit more of a horror book than I was expecting. I mean, it is a thriller and like mystery as well, but there is some horror elements to this, you know, because the whole idea of like her mom and this creature like haunting this bracelet, like some of the scenes in the beginning were so freaking creepy. Like I was immediately hooked by the beginning of this because there's some really creepy imagery of like a woman with like hair covering her face, kind of just standing there and like appearing in certain places. And the main character, she starts to feel like she's going crazy because she's like noticing these things that nobody else is. Like she's noticing this woman that's standing there. She's noticing like a painting that they put up in the bar. And then they're like, we didn't put up any paintings. And there was just a lot of like really weird but interesting things happening in the beginning that I was really enjoying. But honestly, like I feel like since around page 50, I just haven't been enjoying it as much because I feel like the writing is just getting very repetitive because I feel like this character, like all she does, like yeah, she's trying to learn about like her mother's history and like what could have happened and why her mom could be haunting this bracelet, you know? So like she thinks there was something more to her mother's death that she doesn't really know about. But also like the writing itself is, it's just fine for me. I feel like with this character, it's just a lot of repetitive scenes of like her drinking at the White Horse bar, her drinking with her friends, her smoking. Like I don't even know how many times the cigarettes are mentioned on page, like it's excessive. And so while I am curious, you know, to try and figure out like what actually happened with her mother, like I'm definitely invested in the mystery that's going on in this story and I do like a lot of the creepy moments where there's like some kind of creature in the shadows kind of watching them. It's very creepy and very well written in those scenes but for all the scenes that go in between it just feels very slow. It's like very much a slow burn and honestly like unless the ending is just absolutely spectacular I don't really see myself giving this anything higher than three stars at least right now. I'm gonna take a quick break just to like get refreshed. I know I'm gonna be making dinner in a little bit and then tonight I have my Patreon movie night for the good nurse. Rachel's gonna be able to join me as well so it should be very fun and then hopefully I can finish this book up tonight. It is a very quick read. The book is only about 300 pages. Hello hello it is now after 11 o'clock at night. Me and my sister we made this really good dinner. I made like the HelloFresh dinner tonight that you might have saw in the intro of this video and then you know i had the movie night with my patreon we watched the good nurse together which was wow quite a movie you know it was based on a true story and it's like this true crime thriller type of movie and i was not expecting it to be as like sad and depressing as it was so it was a bit heavier of a movie than i was anticipating but it was a really good movie i thought it was really great i loved how it focused on the nurse like the girl's story instead of the guy who's you know like the killer like the guy who got like the whole thing in the movie is that it follows this guy who is like accused of killing his patients and so i liked that the movie was more about her story and not necessarily his because i hate when shows or movies kind of like glamorize serial killers you know and i feel like this did a really good job of not doing that but yeah it was a really good movie and then after that we've been watching that like baking show that Antony does from Queer Eye. We've, me and Rachel have just been watching that show pretty much all week and it's such a cute show. It's called like Make It Easy or Bake It Easy or something like that. I don't know. It's so cute. I love it. I'm also planning on listening to a little bit more of the White Horse audiobook before bed. I mean, it is already 11 o'clock and I'm kind of totally beat, not gonna lie, but I think I'm gonna lay in bed, listen to a little bit more of this tonight, and we'll see, you know, like, I don't know if I'll be able to finish it tonight, because I still have a little bit over 100 pages left, but I do have reading sprints on my Patreon tomorrow, starting at 11 my time, so, like, pretty early, um, so, if anything, I'll probably finish these early on sprints tomorrow. Hey, good morning, it is the next morning, and last night, I wanted to let you know that I got up to 89% of the way through this book. I only have about an hour left of the audiobook. There are same things happening in this book that I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like it's getting a little bit, um, like, I don't know, kind of hard to follow some of the horror things that are happening in this book. But wow, this protagonist talks about The Shining by Stephen King like a lot. It's like, dude, I get it. You really like The Shining. I mean, I'm the same way. Like I love The Shining, but like, damn. Also, it's kind of like going in a direction that I feel like I didn't expect, but in a way that I'm not totally sure if I love where it's going. Like I find myself just kind of wanting to like skim to the end of the chapter and like get to the next thing. So I don't know. I still feel like this is probably going to be a three star for me. Like there are some elements of this book that I'm really enjoying. And then there's some that I'm just kind of like, eh, like, I don't know if I love that. I'm going to be starting reading sprints on Patreon, like right now in just about a minute. And so I'm going to be finishing up this book. I only have that hour left and then I'm going to be getting started on Jackal. 
Okay, I just finished reading White Horse and I am pretty torn on how I feel about this because I really did love the epilogue of this book. I just thought it was really thoughtful and really well written but overall i just wasn't a huge fan of like the last third of this book i just feel like it the story was starting to drag for me and i was just ready for things to end so i don't know i feel like i am going to end up giving this one three stars there were so many things that i did enjoy about this book though like i really loved the creepy atmosphere of like this creature in the story and the idea of her mom kind of like haunting this bracelet throughout the story like any scenes that had her mom or this creature in it were truly creepy like i really really did enjoy those scenes and I do love The Shining and all the different references to The Shining in this. I feel like it just got to be a little bit too much if that makes sense like i feel like sometimes when books rely too much on like other pop culture things it can start to take away from the story for me yeah overall i feel like this one's gonna be a three star book for me and now i am on to starting jackal which i'm very excited about the afternoon and I have started reading Jackal. I'm currently 45% of the way through this on audio and I'm on page like 149 and I just wanted to give a quick update because I've been you know reading these while I've been on my Patreon reading sprints this morning and so far this book is interesting. I've seen a lot of my friends you know like passionately disliking this one and so I am really curious to see where this one is going but basically this is a thriller kind of horror book. It's reading a little bit more like a thriller to me at the beginning but I've heard that it goes in a direction that's a little bit more horror towards the end, I think. Um, but basically, we're following this woman named Liv, and she's going to be going back to her small town where her best friend is going to be getting married. It almost kind of reminds me of that book, When the Reckoning Comes, just because of that setup of like, you know, we follow a black protagonist who's going to be going to her white best friend's wedding. It just feels kind of similar to me in that way. Things quickly go wrong when at the wedding, the bride, uh, her best friend, her daughter goes missing, and her best friend Mel is marrying this black man named Garrett. And there's a lot of talk about how, you know, Mel's family is not the most accepting family of her marrying a black man. Like, her dad just seems to have these, like, weird issues with it. And her dad seems, like, a little bit um, racist, you know? So there's a lot of talk of that. And this book is interesting because in their small town, you know, we get these, like, flashbacks. Like, so the book opens with a flashback of this girl named Alice, who she was this young black girl who disappeared in this town in 1985. And then kind of throughout this story, we get these like kind of seemingly random point of views from these other different black girls that have gone missing in this small town over the years. And it seems like it's a situation where almost every summer there's at least one young black girl that goes missing. And it's like the police don't really seem to be caring too much about that. I mean, they keep saying like, oh, this was ruled as an accident, like even though you know, their bodies are found in the woods, like completely like torn to shreds. And they'll just be like, yeah, I guess that was an animal. And they'll be like, oh, she ran away. And then, you know, an animal got her. Like they just kind of brush it off kind of like they're not, they don't seem to seriously be investigating that this is happening like every single year, which is, you know, pretty terrifying. There's also the vibe of like, they keep thinking that there's something in the woods. Like, I don't know if they're describing it as like a man or like a hunter or like somebody that looks like a dog creature. Like there's description of things like that so I'm just kind of wondering like where this could be going like I have a few different predictions just based off of what's kind of happened in the book so far for where this could be going and I am really curious to see what the kind of you know twist is going to end up being because I've heard such mixed things you know and uh, apparently from a lot of my friends who didn't really enjoy this book it was because 
they said the twist was ridiculous. So it has me even more curious. Sometimes a twist can really make or break a book for me. And I know like a lot of my friends were hating on the twist in Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, but then I ended up really liking it for the most part. So like I'm keeping keeping an open mind, you know, I'm just really curious to see where this one's going. I'm currently um, doing my last sprint right now on Patreon. So I'm gonna listen to a little bit more of this audiobook right now. And then after that, I'm probably gonna take a shower and like wash my hair because my hair really needs to be washed. And then I might, I don't know if I'm going to or not yet, but I might go to the library to pick up my library holds that I couldn't pick up the other day because it was Veterans Day and I'm stupid. Hello, hi. It's like nine o'clock at night and Rachel and I just made these um, like <laughs> strawberry Nutella puff pastry kind of things. Um, I don't know if you remember during my summerween vlogs, I made these kind of like, they were kind of like almond joys with the puff pastry because they were like chocolate and they had like, you know, nuts and coconut in them and that kind of thing. And then I was saying in that vlog, I was like, oh my God, like wouldn't this be so much better if it was like Nutella, you know? And so I found this recipe. We're gonna see if they're good. I feel like it's gonna be good. You know, it's just, it's strawberry Nutella. Like what can go wrong, you know? Oh my goodness, look at this. Sad news is that we don't have any powdered sugar mm. because I fucking forgot. So, I mean, they're kind of bare. Just imagine there's powdered sugar on this, you know? I'm imagining it. <laughs> Um, these look really good. It's probably gonna be hot as shit. Oh, you're just going for it. Yeah. <laughs> you just burn your whole face. Mm -mm. My god. This is exactly what I fucking needed. Hot. Even though Nutella and strawberries mm -hmm. get insanely hot in there. Oh my god. But it's so simple. You just get the puff pastry mm. dough. Mm. You roll it out. Mm. <laughs> you let it defrost. Mm -hmm. and then you add on some Nutella in there. You cut up some strawberries, throw them in there, put an egg, like beat an egg, mm -hmm. wash it over there, and then put it in the fucking oven for like at 400 for like 15 minutes. That's it, period. I'll put the recipe um, down in the description if you want to actually see the recipe, but like, holy shit, uh, so good. All right, hello. It is the next afternoon, but I wanted to update you because I just finished reading Jackal and like, oh... Um, you know, when a lot of people said that this twist was crazy and ridiculous, I really wasn't expecting it to be as crazy and ridiculous as it was. I feel like this book is the perfect example of like how you can ruin a book with an ending, you know? Because it's such a bummer because I genuinely feel like the beginning of this book could have been a four or five star for me. Like I was loving the atmosphere in the first half of this book so much. And I was really enjoying, like, there was so much good commentary in this book, and I really liked the protagonist and, like, everything that was going on. I thought it was great. Like, yeah, the writing itself was, like, not the best, but it was still really engaging, really interesting. I can't even wrap my head around the way that this book ends. Like, why? Like, what the fuck? It's like, I know maybe there will be some people, like, I'm sure there are some people in the world who wouldn't mind an ending like this, but I feel like for most readers, this is gonna be like a massive disappointment. Like what the fuck is this ending? It just really went in a direction that felt like it was kind of like out of left field and maybe just like the author like pulling something out of their ass being like, I don't fucking know. And if this was actually the original idea for this book, then like why? I just have so many questions. And so, I don't know, I feel like as far as my rating goes, I really do need to think about it, you know, because it's like, yeah, like how do you rate a book that you like absolutely love the first half of and then the ending just really ruins everything I love about it? I don't know, I'm gonna have to think more, but I am doing a live show to discuss this book with Brie later this month. So I'll have that live show linked down below so you can save the link if you want to because Wow, this is gonna be quite a discussion because of that ending. What the heck? So yeah, this is kind of unexpected. I think sadly Jackal's probably gonna be my least favorite book that I've read for this vlog, which of course it is because it's my book true pick and I am cursed. Yeah, this was a super fun vlog. I feel like my favorites that I read in this vlog have to be either like the family game or stay awake. And then White Horse ended up being okay for me. And then Jackal was kind of like a major bummer. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I appreciate it. If you've read any of these four books that I read, let me know what your thoughts are. Or if you plan to read any of them now, then also let me know that. And thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.